Hey guys, before we get rolling here, I just want to thank those of you who have left me a review on iTunes. This helps me keep the podcast free, so please keep them coming. Tell your friends. I also want to thank those guys that have been sending in the questions. Um, This is what this podcast is about. It's about getting you the info that uh, you need to help become a better hunter. Uh, Now you can actually go to my website, interviewswiththehuntingmasters.com, and click on the Ask the Pro section. And you can send me your questions there. And you can even suggest a guest. And lastly, before we jump into this episode, I want to shed a little light on one of my sponsors, Sneak Tech Sneak Boots. Uh, I've been wearing them now for several years, and they've really upped my stalking game. I'm, I'm not a very sneaky person. Um, and I find that that extra added... Um, stealthiness that they give me has really really improved my stock i believe in them so much that i've decided to give away one pair each month to a lucky subscriber so if you're a subscriber once a month i'm going to be announcing a winner to win a pair of sneak tech boots so go ahead and go check them out at sneaktech.com and it's s-n-e-e-k-t-e-c.com Let's get to the next episode. Hi, welcome to Interviews with the Hunting Masters, brought to you by the Sneak Tech Sneak Boot. Uh, this week, we're going to talk to a good friend of mine, uh, Zach Kenner, the hardworking hunter. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about um, mule deer hunting specifically, I think. And because Zach is like me, he travels a lot, he goes to a lot of different places, likes to new adventures. Uh, I like to hear how he does it, how he does his scouting, how he looks into, you know, areas to hunt and so on and so forth and goes about, uh, Zach's kind of hit the, uh, the film circuit here this year. He's got a, got a film out in the, uh, full draw film tour, uh, called true conservation. We're going to talk to a little bit about that and, uh, and go from there. What's going on, Zach? Hey, how's it going? Good, man. Just, uh, stuffing 10 gallons of shit in a five gallon hat today but <laughs> yeah i'm actually doing this my i usually don't do podcasts when my family's home my family's here so if somebody comes oh. busting through somebody comes <laughs> busting through the door one of the kids comes screaming in here i apologize in advance uh, um yeah so i uh yeah just kind of getting all my stuff together i got my first uh i just came off my first hunt but my first like big hunt of the year is uh is utah i drew central manti elk tag and i'm doing that in august uh because i also drew a wyoming bull tag as well and i just figured that manti i was there hunting around the same time for deer last year and i saw a lot of elk and the and the and it was very glassable and where i drew in wyoming is not a very glassable unit so I'm going to kind of have to rely more and be able to call them and follow bugles and so on, so, 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 so forth. So I decided, let me go to Wyoming in the rut and, and then Utah, you know, in that early part of the season. So, so how'd it go? What's that? So <laughs> how'd it go? Like, I didn't go yet. I'm going. Oh, I thought you said you were coming off of it. I say, no, I, I, I just came off my first, I just came off my first, uh, hunt, which was in California, which was oh, a blacktail black, hunt. Blacktail. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I got my ass kicked again. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know what the hell, what it is about that. Well, I know what it is. It's just, it's the terrain and the conditions really. Cause the deer themselves, yeah, they're cagey, but they're not, they're not like worse than a coos deer or anything like that. Right. My share, share of those. Um, it's just, um, it's the time of year. It's super dry. The grass is like freaking chest high, and it's just, it's just you, not good conditions. You only so, get an hour in the morning, an hour at night to see them. You know, right? That makes yeah. it really hard. So, so but that, the difference was this year. I hunted a different area. We were more, we were on the coast more than anything this year, and um, like years past, I basically every single morning. The evenings were a little shaky, but every single morning in the three years prior, I got on deer and I was making stalk after stalk after stalk and I wasn't getting busted. I would just get to a spot where I couldn't go any closer or couldn't. And I was kind of just hoping, praying that they were kind of feeding my direction and it never happened. I, I can't tell you how many bucks I sat like 
just beautiful bucks where I was like at 110 yards or 120 mm. yards and just wishing that I brought, you know, my bow with a slider on it or something so I could send one at 120, <laughs> you know, but you know, I, I, I don't like to hunt with that bow. It's kind of just a, you know, a, a target bow um, for me, but I, you know, so I could never get to that 80 yard mark. I had one opportunity last year on, um, on the very first morning I got on probably one of the biggest ones that I've actually got an opportunity to hunt. Uh, he was mid one fifties, which is giant for, I think for right. coastal blacktail. And, um, I, I slipped in, I thought I, I thought I was at, uh, at 70, but cause I kept ranging and I was hitting the grass. I think hitting the grass in front of him cause he was laying down yeah. and he must've been, cause I, when I went, I, after the shot, I went down to him and I, I, I ranged back up to where I was sitting something solid and it was coming back 77. So I was either 75 to 77 actually away from him. So I shot right underneath him. Um, yeah. And that was my only opportunity that I was actually in range and I freaking blew it. So it was <laughs> it happens. devastating, but this year, <laughs> I didn't even make a stalk to the last day. Oh wow! Yeah, we just were. I I was seeing little two point. I had a I had a two by. I had a legal buck. I mean, technically technically uh, technically legal buck pass in front of me, um, at like thirty five, a little under forty yards. I mean, I totally could have shot him, but I was like, I put so much time and effort into it. I just didn't want to just shoot anything, just to shoot something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. But that last day, I had like four stalks, and they just. I was like a minute late and a dollar short on every single one of them. Like the very first one, we were getting there and he was kind of feeding in an open thing and I had a rise like between him and I. So I, I was moving, man. I was cooking. I had to climb all the way up the mountain, but I got to the point when I got to him and I was like literally 50 yards from cresting to the top of a rise and I would have had like a 75 yard shot to him. And... You know, I was going slow because it was kind of crunchy and it wasn't that windy that morning. So, and then he just started feeding and he fed it, fed away, fed away, fed away until he fed into the, into the tree line. And I just, you know, had I been there five minutes earlier or three minutes earlier, even I would have, I would have at least had a shot opportunity. And then like literally within 30 minutes of that, um, my buddy Charles that I've been hunting with, he, he radios him. He's like, Hey, I got another buck. I'm like, okay, let's just go for it. So again, I get up there literally 20 seconds before I got into position where I was going to be able to get a shot at him. I was just coming through these. He got up and he moved and he dropped down and he got and laid that back down on the other side of the tree because the, the shade was shifting, you know, oh, right. the sun would just started hitting him in the face at that point. And I was like, I cannot believe this. I'm like, <laughs> if I would have ran a little bit far faster up the hill or something, you know, um, but I was that one I was going into completely blind. You know, he was just radioing to me and telling me where to go and how to get to it. So like had I seen him, I probably would have been so cautious and I would have known exactly the route I would have taken. You know, it takes a little bit of doing if you've never done that one before with somebody else. And yeah, but uh yeah, and it was just like constantly. And then the very, very last stalk of the night, um, that night I got and this was on me, I busted the deer. I was just getting I was pushing it. It was getting really dark and I just, I was already at 45 yards. I didn't know I was at 45 yards because I couldn't really see him. And because I'm an idiot, I got to that point <laughs> and I was just get. I was looking where my range finder ranging things just in case he jumped up. And I put the range finder down and um, Jake radios him. He goes, hey, hey, he's looking up in your direction. I'm like, oh shit, you know, so I kind of squatted back down. And I'm like, and, he, and they just, I just sat there for like 10 minutes and he was just still looking up, looking up, looking up. And finally I'm like, I'm like, screw it. He's looking up. So I stood back up. I figured had, had he seen me, I would have already been busted. And I picked up my binos and I could see the tips of his antlers. And I'm like, oh shit. So I put my binos back down and I clipped back in and I took one step forward and just jumped up and ran. I was like, ah, it was just like, I just right there. You know, yeah, it was just terrible. But he was he was a big, big two by two. He was a big forky, that last guy. But the other two were really good bucks. Yeah, yeah I want to I want to make it down there one of these years and have a go at him. But yeah, it'll happen. 
everybody tells me just go to Oregon. So much better, so much easier. <laughs> Not easier, but so much more conducive to. Well, I like the Cali because of the season. You know, yeah. it's earlier. Yeah, so. exactly. That's exactly why I like. I mean, cool. Who the hell's hunting in July? Nobody. Yeah. That, oh, and I always. July and yeah. or August. You know, I mean, there's yeah. some. You know, uh, Utah opens earlier. But yeah. and, and Arizona Nevada. opens in August too. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't. So. I don't go down there till January. So. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't even hunt here in August anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. Once in a blue moon, I'll get out, but. Typically, I'm going somewhere else just to get out of it. I'm so tired of the heat by that time. I don't know. Oh, that. right. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, anyway. It's like, a, it's like 115 down there today. God, it's terrible. <laughs> and it's so humid right now. Uh, I, I went and checked the property this morning, and I was like, I came back, and I, I was out there for 15 minutes, and I looked like I took a shower. It was just soaking wet. It's terrible. So, but, anyway. Um, well, let's get a little rundown about yourself. Give me a little, like, short little bio little rundown about yourself and what you do and then uh you know we'll roll into some questions yeah so um like i said i'm zach kenner i uh, grew up in eastern washington and i've pretty much grown up hunting mule deer my whole life um you know hunted elk occasionally here and there but pretty much been a mule deer hunter through and through um you know now i've the last few four or five years i've been really branching out hunting other states mm -hmm. multiple species you know and you know just mentioning the coos deer like that's one of my favorite hunts now going down there in january and they get underneath your skin those little bastards oh man it's, <laughs> it's so much fun you know and so yeah now I've, I've been filming for a long time but really stepped up and you know bought some nice cameras and learned how to edit and doing all that the last oh, three years or so and so it well really was kind of my goal to make the full draw film tour that's kind of what really set the tone for you know um my style of filming and whatnot now right and so yeah last year i they, i didn't make it i didn't quite have the storyline mm -hmm. um, uh, he played they they played my movie that i had here for a couple of the local shows but that was about it and then uh, right but yeah but then this year yeah i made the tour and and that's been going really well uh that's awesome jade um jade bought it bought the tour from cody and and uh, he's took it to a whole new level the 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 tour's gone so many places this year that it's never been before right so it's it's been cool it's been fun to see or fun to watch the progress and and um yeah, you know, it's an interesting film. I, I kind of, I really don't want to give it all yeah. away. Cause, yeah, no, we don't need to talk about the actual film film itself. Yeah. I mean, but you know, it's called True Conservation. Yeah. I, I remember when you sent it to me when you first did it. Yeah. And uh, even when it was super rough around the edges, I, I told you that. I'm like, I think you got a winner. You just got to tell the storyline better. Yeah. And, and I mean – uh, I definitely don't want to take credit for what you've done, but I, I remember you. I remember you, you. You did a lot of things that I had told you to do, yeah. and automatically I was like, "This is clicking." I'm like, "When?" Well, then you cleaned it up even more, and you took it to the next level. And it's just like, yeah. I think it's. I think it's a fantastic because nobody's ever done anything like that for one, right. and two, um, it's just a really good. It's a good story. It's got like you know people can relate to it. At least I think. Yeah hunters relate late to it so yeah no, i definitely had, gotta I've, check that out guys i've had some amazing feedback just you know from people i've never met from across the country like have sent me DM, dm me messages and stuff and tell me how much it touched them and 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 you know and, and not just the hunters but the hunters wives the hunters daughters mm -hmm. you know it's it's it really tugs on the heartstrings so you know it's it's yeah it's it's definitely one of a kind and you know it's like i said it's been awesome to to, for it to be on the tour but i'm i'm even more excited to release it to the public you know come this next winter right and, uh, when the tour's over and and i mean i've got so many some big plans for it you know it's it's uh mule deer foundation said they're they're already going to be willing to help me um you know spread the word and and nice. let everybody see that film because it's it's it really tells a conservation story so that's awesome yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm excited. Congrats, man. Yeah, it's been it's been cool. It's been amazing. And I, all the, I don't all the hard work paying off. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know how I'm going to one-up that one. Like, <laughs> like that, 
it's, you know what? That's the thing. I used to think of it that way as, oh, how am I going to better or not yeah. or necessarily one up it? It's just not that. I just, just got to just tell the stories as they come. Because if you yeah. start trying to like fabricate or not fabricate, but kind of enhancing things so that they, they seem better than the last one. I mean, yeah, you could, you could improve your cinematography. You can get better with right, your shot. Cause right. obviously, I mean, you did a lot with a little, I mean, I did, your, right. your original footage was kind of, I mean, Very it bad. was wrong. It and, was and, wrong. and, and the, sh and the shot footage was bad. I mean, ha yeah. had your dad holding the camera, yeah. never ran a camera before. I mean, so to, to get it to a film tour for what you had, I mean, that's amazing. So just going forward now that you have all this, you have new equipment, you know, right. you've got a lot more experience underneath your belt. Cause I mean, when did you shoot, that was two years ago that you actually that shot those two days. years ago. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, you got two more years of experience. I mean, so just, just by default, your films are going to be better. Well, and, and um, yeah, it, it, it shows for itself. If you go to like my YouTube channel and see my Wyoming 2016 film, uh -huh. I mean, the, the cinematography, the, the shots I took are, are just ten, <laughs> tenfold better compared to, you know, that 2015 year. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, going forward, I'm, I'm excited to see what I can produce for sure. So, Sweet. Well, that'd yeah. be cool, man. I'm excited to see what you're going to produce. I'm actually <laughs> kind of, I'm stepping away from doing stuff a lot. Just, um, you know, I'm still trying to film my hunts and if, one of them comes out film worthy i'm you know i'll make a film from it but yeah i uh i just don't have it's not that i have the passion for it i have the drive for it i just don't have the people behind me uh anymore i don't have the time and it's just i'm a terrible editor i'm a great i'm a great storyteller i know how i want it to look but the actual uh, mechanics of editing um, it's like, I have a hard time sitting in front of the computer to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and if just, I, if I could do that, then I think my films would be a lot better. Um, instead of me having to try to explain to somebody else how I want it to be, you know, want it to look. And that's, that's where my biggest disconnect is. Um, but I just, I don't have it in me to go, you know, learn how to be a, awesome you know final cut user or whatever um so well, and, it, yeah. and it's expensive if you're gonna have somebody else edit it like that's oh yeah it's that's crazy expensive mm -hmm. so yep. yeah yeah I don't, I don't know how much longer i mean i'm i'm definitely kind of the same as you where i'll probably always try and film it but i mean i'm still gonna try for a couple more years to kind of you know really take it to the next level but i don't mm -hmm. know we'll see we'll see where it goes yeah, it's, it's tough. Stuff. It's tough to say because yeah. I mean, passion only takes you so far, and if you're not making money off these things, it's kind of hard. Yeah, you know, it's kind of hard to keep doing them. So you have self funding. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Well, um, so interviews with the masters, we get questions thrown at us all the time on social media. On um, if you go to johnstallone dot uh, dot me, you uh, there's uh, ask the pros deal. You kind of you know put in questions and stuff. So we get all these questions. Um. And we're going into early season mule deer hunts. So my questions for you today are based on those. Gotcha. Um, we already said that, you know, you're a guy that hunt multiple species in multiple states and you, you know, you hunt varying landscapes. You kind of, you know, do what I do. Like, you know, you'd like to travel venture hunter. Right. Um, can you, and try to be as specific as possible. Can you give me a plan or, that somebody could adapt into the skill set on what it is you do when you're researching uh, take it from research to, you know, actually getting in the field and doing what you got to do. Like if, you know, how do you pick your spot? How do you do your cyber scouting? How do you do your actual scouting? You know, what is it that you do that, you know, puts deer on the ground? Yes. Um, that's a, it's actually kind of a tricky question. Um, you know, I mean, I've, it really is there's no one answer to cover it all. You know I mean? Mm -hmm. For, for example, I mean, I'll use Utah as an example. Last year I hunted Utah for the first time. Mm -hmm. I never, never really been to the mountains that I was hunting. You know, I sure I e-scouted, looked for some basin looking country and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but really all I did was cause, cause I knew, especially in those bigger mountains, what it looks like on Google earth, is a lot of times completely different of what it looks like in person. 
Right. So, so a lot of times I'll just, you know, get on like on X maps or whatever and see what's public, you know, what big chunks of public kind of overlap that with Google earth and look at it and go, okay, yeah, you know, this is all national forest. I got a lot of country here. I can hunt. And a lot of times I show up a day or two early before I want to start hunting and just drive around and look at the country, what I can see from a road, Um, you know, and look up into high basins and peaks from roads and shoot. I mean, there was one time last year where we kind of got pushed out of our first spot by people and really lack of deer. Um, Mm -hmm. And I drove to a completely new area, never been to it and was glassing up herds of bucks at three miles away one you know that morning and i mean way up from the road up into these basins now i couldn't necessarily see what they had for horns i could see they had horns right i just i just go dude there's two bachelor herds of bucks up there there's probably more like let's let's hike up there for the day and see what's there tomorrow and and you know just get closer and see what we could find and that actually turned out to be one of the better spots i i'd found but kind of similar to you on those blacktail hunts where we hunted for full 10 days and never really got a chance and that's, yeah. how it, and that's just how it goes but i we did find some shooter bucks it just took time because mm-hmm. i've never been there before and so i mean that's another thing where you kind of gotta keep realistic expectations where that was my first year there and i not necessarily going to get a buck you know i mean maybe mm-hmm. but i the hardest part, especially in those high mountains, is just finding them. And mm-hmm. so now that now that I kind of been there once, found them, I bet you I could go back and do a lot better. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's it's in e scouting only takes you so far, and then sometimes it just takes a little bit of luck. But yeah, you know, and then I'll cross reference, you know, so for example, like what unit to go hunt, and I could use kind of arizona as an example for that because i've only hunted that for two years and the first first year i went down there you know i i a buddy of mine has a hunt full subscription and we got on and or looked through the magazine and kind of read you know we read the draw rifle descriptions Mm -hmm. because you know with the late archery you can pretty much hunt all of those and um, right kind of reading you know buck quality buck numbers and then same thing i cross cross reference you know those um information informational paragraphs with where's the most public ground in those units and you know because if i can get out there and cover a lot of that country in that public ground i'm going to find deer right you know so and and this is me never even really understanding you know what i was getting myself into a whole new species in a completely different environment and uh yeah we got down there and you know i mean i knew those deer are going to be in the rut so they're going to be moving so i just put myself high and started glassing and you know lo and behold you're picking out movement you know right and it's actually amazing how many deer are and and so are are down and around those mountains but it's it's not just one unit either because then the next year i'm like okay that was fun but let's try a different unit and it didn't didn't matter where we went, we were we were finding coos deer everywhere. You know. Yeah. So, if you if you catch the rut right over here, they, yeah, it doesn't matter what unit you go to, you're gonna find them. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. You know, and so that, but I, I feel like, even though yeah, that is kind of specific because it's the rut. Um, I'm looking at, oh, a couple different hunts right now, different states I've never been to. Mm-hmm. And, but I'm, it's the same process. I'm I'm trying to figure out where the biggest chunks of public ground are, what units those are in, and then what the seasons are available. Right. Um, it, so it's – and then when I get there, uh, for example, like let's say it's a high desert, you know, I'm going to tr- probably try for the early season, try to find some water sources, you know, and because the, they got to drink, you know, and, and um, kind of go from there as – is to you know put myself high and start glassing that's just right uh, that's what i do (laughs) do you so so i'd imagine that you're because you're relying on your ability to glass i'd imagine you're looking for areas that are more conducive to glassing like you're not going to go into some crazy thick area that you can't see three feet right um and that was actually kind of what what I was running into in Cali on the coast on the coastal properties that we hunted this year. 
uh, we couldn't see. You can't. You couldn't glass. So I didn't take yeah. my 15s out. Um, but so do you have like okay if you're looking at a piece of land do you have like specific starting points i know obviously you told me you're looking for a glassing spot something that you can get set up on and see a lot of country but are you looking for like any key features specifically you mentioned looking for bowl stuff um yeah but- yeah i mean d- depending on which country you're in you know the high mountains early season yeah the looking for basins you know fairly open um, fairly rocky even a lot of a lot of those mule deer you know are going to be up living with the mountain goats you know ledgy um, type stuff right yeah 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 whereas oh you know you go eastern montana the dakotas you know like the badlands yeah you know you're looking for drainages that 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 hold water and mm-hmm. those deer aren't going to be far from them um, you know, anything that, you know, you can get on Google Earth and, and pick out, you know, July, August, September on the months and then look over your area and see what's green. Yeah. Because that's where there's going to be water. So, you know, I mean, that's, that's, that's a pretty good tip, I think, in the desert country when you're, for when sure, you're, when you're e scouting. Yeah. You know, um, and so, yeah, you're, you know, looking for those kind of, bigger deep drainages that those bucks are going to go bed in and mm-hmm. try to find a same, same story though a spot where you can look down a good chunk of it you know and and glass a lot of it at once yeah uh, and then for me a lot of times i'll try to do it where it's at least two to three miles off a road if i if i can right so which sometimes is difficult to do yeah i, I um like for instance like wyoming Cause I've been hunting there for a long time. I know if I go on, I, if I go on Google, I could tell you where deer are going to be. Cause yeah. you get so used to seeing that same type of terrain and, and correlating the, the sightings of bucks. Like basically if you're, if you're hunting the, you know, the Northern Plains of, of Wyoming, if you find like those cedar breaks, there's going to be deer there yeah, no matter what. I mean, I don't know they're going to be big deer or the deer that you're looking for, but there's going to be deer there for sure. It's like, it just has that right topography, has the right vegetation. And like you said, the ability to hold little pockets of water. Um, And I think that just goes back to learning the, uh, the behavior based on, I mean, mule deer behavior is pretty you know, uh, consistent across the board, but it gets little, the little minute things of where you're at, like, you know, in the desert, you know, okay, water's key. You mm-hmm. know, if you're in a, you know, a dry environment, water's key, but, uh, or really windy, you got to look for a lot of breaks, got to look for a lot yeah. of, you know, wide open spaces. You got to look for a lot of little like undulations and breaks. And I think those are the keys that, or, um, or, or if it's wide open spaces, you're looking for those shaded sides because that's the only, right. you know, without trees to put themselves in shade, they're going to find a, they're going to find a cut bank to go up under. So, yeah. So it's funny we're in Cal, Cali, um, we got to this one spot it was a good, good glassing spot. We could see, you know, see the uh, mountainside very well. And I turned over to Charles, I go, Charles, we're, we're glassing from the wrong area. I said, I guarantee you, if we go back up the road this way and come around and look at from the other angle, I said, because the sun, the sun's coming across us like this and all the shades on the right side of the tree. I said, all the bucks are going to be better on that side of the tree. Sure enough. I mean, I stayed put because I was trying to look for this one area where we had seen that one buck that it, that I stalked in the morning. I was trying to pick him up in the trees, like look through the thick stuff. Charles goes over there. Hey, I got that. That's where he found the big forky. He's like, <laughs> like he picked it up in yeah. like seconds. And I was yeah. like, yeah, I mean, if you just got to kind of like, you get it, you get an idea what deer do. Um, and that, that stalk I made in the morning, I said, I got to move my ass up there because of that, that shade's going to come right across his face sooner or later and he's going to get up and move. And sure enough, I didn't get up there in time, but yeah. you know, it's just those things like that, that kind of like, I think that set the people who, um, consistently you know, that, take animals a lot of apart. A lot of that's just experience, you know, trying to mm-hmm. trying to explain that to a new guy, it's hard. I mean, 
that's what I, the most I can tell somebody is to actually just get out there and do it. I mean, like I just said on my Utah hunt last year, I mean, we didn't even get a stock, you know, and, and that's just part of it. I, I went, I learned some country. Um, yeah, I, I kind of know mule deer behavior already, but it was just how mean that country was. I, mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I underestimated it really, you know, and, and it kicked my butt when I got there. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's just, you just got to get out and, and learn it. I mean, it, you can't expect success on the first trip out. Yeah. And so. I actually had a bunch of stalks on my Utah hunt last year. I had, I had a little bit of a leg up. I gotta, I gotta say, cause I had a, I have a buddy of mine that lived there, although he only hunted with me for two days. Um, he got to, he showed me a few areas, which, you know, gotcha. obviously always, always helps out. Um, and, uh, Derek, Derek Kiesel, he, uh, he like, you know, and I actually made some friends, some guys from Arizona that were hunting there that had been hunting there forever. Um, they live up in Havasu, um, Sam and his dad, Franny. And, um, you know, I hunted with them a little bit. I was actually with him when he killed his buck uh, and I helped him pack it out. It was, um, he, he shot a pretty decent buck. I had I missed one too, um, two days before the one that I ended up shooting on the last day. I shot one on the last day, last minute. It's a cool four by two, Be like you know, nothing giant, but you know, yeah. like 100, 130 inch buck. But um, I missed a pretty good one, like a one fifty something, four by four, and uh, it was just super windy, and he was facing me broadside, and I just I couldn't, I just never got that pin settle. It was just the wind was just blowing me back, mm -hmm. and I. Yeah, you know, I get delusions of grandeur that I'm the greatest archery hunter <laughs> ever, and I take shots that I probably shouldn't take. So, um, anyway, I um, you know, then the other example too, like two years ago when we went down to Arizona for the first time, we had zero expectations of actually killing a deer. I right. mean, you're like, yeah, we were pretty optimistic, but going into something we've I've never really been to Arizona before. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you just see the stuff you see on YouTube and on TV. It's like, I mean, from what you can tell, a lot of the good coos you're hunting is a little higher in the mountains. And it's like, well, let's just go find the big chunks of state ground national forest that have the mountains in them, you know, and, and yeah. just go exploring. I mean, that's that's all it was. And, um, you know, I'm, I missed a couple of well one really nice buck and then my buddy ended up getting one and i mean it was just uh, amazing the you know that we got that lucky mm -hmm. but yeah the, then this the second year going back down there complete confidence that yep. we were going to kill deer you know i mean because we'd find we'd been down there we'd experienced it and and we did we killed three three out of three tags awesome bucks. We, you know tagged yeah. out so yeah. it was it was so much fun but, yeah I'm going to back up a little bit. We started talking about like behavior and all that stuff. And, and you said something, you just got to get out there and yeah. get some experience, but it's not just getting out there and getting experience. Cause if you think about it, there's guys that go out and hunt like up for, okay, we'll talk about coos deer. There's guys here that have been hunting coos deer for their whole lives and never killed one with a bow. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's going out there, getting experience, but, paying attention and recording those incidents, you know, like, I think that's, that's the main thing is you got to like, really like, okay, that just happened. What the hell did I do? Analyze what yeah. I did wrong, what I did right. Like, and, and, and then being able to recall on those things. So like you made whatever mistakes you made that first year, you learned whatever you learned on that first year. And when you came back the second year, that's why you were confident because you're like, Okay, I know what I did wrong. I know what I did right. Now I know if I do this, 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 and that, my chances right. of getting one are going to go way the hell up. If you just keep going out there and doing the same as thing you do every single time and don't make adjustments, you yeah, know, you're probably going to get the same result every time yeah. once you get lucky. No, that's a good point. You know? That's a good point for sure. And that's why guys so, talk about, oh, I'd rather be lucky than good. Yeah, if you're going to rely on luck. So I'm a very unlucky guy. Everybody who knows me, they're like, I can't believe that you actually kill things because <laughs> if it's gonna, it's gonna, if it's gonna be, if it's gonna happen, if it's bad luck is gonna happen, it's gonna happen to me. 
Because yeah. I, I mean, it always does. Like, I mean, I just told you on that, on that, uh, on my blacktail hunt, you know, just a little stupid. I mean, it's not like, okay, it's not bad luck, but the, it's like, come on, seriously, throw me a freaking bone. You couldn't let him yeah. sit there for one more minute. You know, it's like, yeah. But, um, so I think it's, it's, it's being able to recognize the things that you do right and the things that you and analyze the things that you do wrong and make corrections and adapt that is yeah. going to make you the most successful out in the field that's my yeah. that's my two cents and you said it but you didn't say it like yeah yeah you you said it without know you were saying it I, i'm just clarifying it for you because i know no, i know no, what you're saying getting out there yeah. and getting the experience because you're that type of guy that's you know you go you go explore you make your mistakes and then psh, next year i'm getting a, i'm getting a deer no matter what yeah. This is why yeah. Blacktail's killing me because I've made whatever adjustments I need to make and I still keep fucking it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, man. It happens though. I mean, and like, now I got to wait till next year to do it again. So that's the other thing. You know, you go for four or five days. This Today, this year, I went I went seven. But um, yeah. No, I want to go down there and do that hunt for sure. That's, yeah. I, although I'd probably, I don't know, I don't know exactly where you're, you know, what area you were kind of hunting, but. I think Mendocino I wanna, County, basically. I want to do some of the high, Sonoma. more of the high country stuff. You know, there's that uh, that northwest corner. That's so that's kinda... B, B zone stuff going to the Trinities. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, that's see, that's supposed to be way better hunting, and and like, you're not gonna deal with the crap that I'm dealing with. The thick stuff. Yeah, it's not even just the thick stuff. It's the it's the conditions are different. Oh, you're looking exactly. more at a mountain hunt. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot more water. There's a lot more uh, green up there. It's not as, so everybody that I've ever talked to and I keep, but I'm like, I'm so hell bent now that I need to get it done in a zone and yeah. I need to get it done on the coast. And it's like, I'm like, you know, I'm so just hell bent. This has got to happen. Um, and when I do, that's when I'm going to switch over to B zone or, or, uh, what is it? Uh, B4 or whatever I think it's called. That's supposed to be, I mean, there's the hunts are way better. Um, and you could haunt bear that time of year. There's right. bear everywhere. Shit, I can't tell. Yeah. I mean, this year, we I didn't see any bear. A lot of bear sign, but I didn't see any bear this year. But in years prior, we glassed up so many bears, and you're like, fuck, I can't shoot this damn bastard. So I think Charles had one walk past him at 20 yards last year. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> so, but yeah. Um, let's see. I kind of lost my place, so we had some questions for you that I wanted to get covered. Um. Well, I got, so when you set out into the woods and you look for a place to hunt, uh, you choose a direction that you, you know, the, the direction that you want to go. Is there like a method to your madness or do you just like, you know, Dude, there's, there's deer everywhere, literally right. everywhere. I mean, yeah, there's places that are better than others, but I mean, as, as long as there's a, I feel like if, if it's a big enough chunk of public land, like I'm going to cover country and just find them, you know, I mean, that's, and, and I guess it's kind of like what you were saying. It's I'm relying on my glass a, a lot, right. but I mean, that's to me, it's just, as long as there's enough country there, I'll find them. I mean, there's, there's deer in there. There's, there's yeah. deer everywhere. So yeah, I, for like, sure. I, I really don't have an exact method other than, I mean, yeah, I mean, we kind of already covered it. Like, yeah. if, it's, if it's in desert stuff, I'm going to be heading towards water, you know, yeah. or, or, you know, where there's green shrubbery and not just dry, you know, dry, crisp nothingness. Mm -hmm. um, so, or yeah, if it's in the mountains, I, especially for mule deer, I'm going up, you know, the higher you can go and put, get an eagle eye on them, you know, you're going to find them. Right. So... I mean, that's, I don't really hunt, uh, you know, that's going to be different, you know, hunting thick stuff for blacktail, especially in like, you know, Oregon, California. I mean, that's, that's a whole different tactic that I'm really not familiar with because I haven't done it. Right. So, from from yeah, what I, I can tell, a lot of, I these, feel like if I can tree stand hunt them and I had yeah. time to scout and throw cameras and stuff like that, I can get them killed. Cause yeah. for me, I, f I feel like that hunt is more conducive to the way I hunt whitetail back East or something like that. And I'm, yeah. I've been told that about style hunting glass and stuff, and it's it's a little tough to do in, in the areas that I've been hunting anyway. Um, 
Yeah. So my yeah, buddy Charles, he still hunts. He just walks like he's just silent though. But I mean, I'm like a woolly mammoth coming through the freaking. <laughs> it's like that style don't work for me. Uh, so that means you're good at hunting elk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I sound like a whole herd of elk coming. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh shit! But so I want to. I, what's that one sign that you see when you're in the woods that you're like, I'm gonna see deer today. You seen something? Oh. out there what is it that you see or or a basin or a or a landscape feature or whatever what is that one thing that you see and you're like there's gonna be freaking deer right there um you know that that definitely depends on the country um i jump over to idaho for example there's a spot i hunt over there where you know it's <laughs> they don't it's not really like high basin stuff you know like colorado or wyoming but you know, you'll be hiking along and, and there'll be a little burn or something and there's buck brush there, you know, mm -hmm. and where the rest of it's kind of just like whether they're huckleberry bushes or whatever. And then all of a sudden, like you get up a little bit higher and there's a pretty good patch of buck brush. Like, I feel like I'm going to see, there's going to be deer on that hillside somewhere. And because they, they like to summer in those in those buck brush patches for some reason you know mm -hmm. they, they nibble on them i don't know yeah. what's in them but um so i mean it's, it's it's spot specific you know like definitely like in that spot of idaho like that's what i look for mm -hmm. um, and that's it, like i said though that's experience because i've been there before i've hunted it a couple times and that seems to be where i see deer right um, completely different to where um you know, you go like, yeah, to Wyoming and, and, and it, it's like, yeah, there's. <laughs> you hear my kids oh, yeah. <laughs> yelling at each other, maniacs. But it's sheer love. They're just yelling yeah. out of love. My <laughs> two girls no. fight like cats and dogs, man. Oh, uh, we all do when we're young. <sighs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's it's totally spot specific and, and it's, or, or, you know, it, like I get out here in Eastern Washington and there's a lot of agriculture. Mm -hmm. And so you're either looking for like chunks of CRP that, you know, that are, are in there for 10 years and, you know, they're not necessarily farmed. I mean, they're, 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 uh, they are planted into this CRP, which you know helps with erosion and it right. helps with the wildlife conservation and, and habitat. I mean, those deer love those little chunks. Yeah. Um, and, and when you got that bordering like uh, an alfalfa field, you know, I mean. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like so. It's, <laughs> it's like a. Yeah. It's like or, a mall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So deer it, mall. It, it, it totally depends on where you are. Yeah. Um, but but definitely you know more mountain country. You find you know you come around the corner and there's just a nice beautiful green basin. It's like that's that's the spot. You know, right. So it's, it just depends. To, that's the best answer I can really say. No, no, but yeah. it, it goes back to what we were saying earlier. And that's just paying attention and, and keeping a mental note. Okay. I see deer here. I've seen deer here. I've seen deer here. Why, why are those deer there? Yeah. And taking those components and applying it to wherever, you know, if you go to a hundred different area in the same state or whatever, Oh, I, I, I see that this has this and this has this, this has this, there's buck rush, there's, you know, bramble, there's this and that, mm -hmm. and there's going to be yeah. deer, yeah. you know? So yeah, like for instance, like we were talking about coos deer. I know that if I find a giant chunk of like really thick Ocotillo with yeah. some open space next to it and then yeah. some thick stuff above it, there's going to be deer in there. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They, I mean, so. it's just, that's their thing. They, the every, heart. every species of deer in every area that there, there's something commonality of things that they like. And that if you can figure out what that recipe is, you can apply it to any area that you hunt in and you'll be able to find deer Yeah, or, or elk or antelope or anything else, you know, it's the same, same thing. So, yeah. And, and, and not just. I mean, like you said, you're, you're basically figuring it out to their needs. You know, they need food, they need water, they need shelter. That's mm -hmm. their three basic needs, just like us. So, I mean, I'll be, you'll be walking along 
through the forest and noticed that this certain flower, all the heads are eaten off of it. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, you know, just random little things like that, that you pick up on. Right. So, or, or you'll be walking along in the opposite, all, all their heads are on them. And it's like, yeah. okay, well, you know, on that ridge line, they were all gone. So they're probably either haven't been here or they've already moved through it. You know, I mean, just mm -hmm. little things like that. Yeah. So attention is in the detail. Uh, success is in the details. Yeah. For sure. Attention to the details is the, is key. Well, cool, man. Um, so do you have any, I know you and I kind of talked about this earlier today, um, before we got on, you have any, uh, any upcoming hunts that are going to be, but you're, uh, you yeah. really don't have much, you don't really have much coming in the, uh, in the, in the works here. Well, unless you get a chance to run up to Alaska and do that moose hunt, but. Yeah. I mean, it's not that I have a lot planned. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be working as a cameraman this fall for a lot of it, but, um, there's enough over the counter hunts that I've been reading up into, you know, tags that will be available if I happen to be able to break away for four or five days, you know? Right. Um, but I am going to get to go on a bear hunt here in Washington. Um, cause it opens or it opens August 1st in some areas and August 15th and others. And I've right. got a hunt. I got to go film mid August, but like late August I'm open. So I'm going to go shoot a couple of bears in Washington, I think. And that'll Sweet. be, that, that'll be like my, one of my main hunts for the fall really. That and then probably uh, some late November archery hunts, you know, for mule deer. So I'll get to do a couple. It'll st I'll still have a couple films to put out. So nice. I'm excited. To, I'm excited to do that bear one because I haven't hunted bear a lot. Uh, I've killed. I, I killed a giant when I was younger, just deer hunting. You know, got lucky, bumped into it, and um, since then I really haven't. It's like I got one, and I've always wanted one, but I really yeah. haven't hunted them. So I'm, I'm kind of excited to get out and, and actually truly hunt bears, you know, go on like a right. seven day trip where and, and specific for bear. Yeah. 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 So that'll be fun. And the country, you know, you hunt, you hunt them over here in uh, the Cascade mountains in uh, Western Washington. And it's just gorgeous, high mountain, high basin, you know, rocky, nasty country that, mm -hmm. this is look, and this is looking to be a, a really good uh, huckleberry year. So there's the, the bear hunting should be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I remember hunting in the Cascades uh, for Rosies, and um, I uh, I I found a really giant bear in this in this clear cut, and I was like, oh man! I mean, it was a big old pumpkin head. I was a big bear. There's I, so many so many yeah. bears in the Cascades. That's yeah, that's their. I mean, they love that super wet, mm -hmm. dense forest. That's like their thing, man. That's their yeah. thing for sure. That's like just like I mean, go to Canada. It looks just like that. So yeah, and and I mean, they offer two tags per person. Like, wow, that's cool. So, yeah, it's it, it'll be fun. I'm I'm excited. And you know, between me uh, taking another book, my buddy Tyson, and then mm -hmm. uh, potentially uh, I might hook up with um, uh, Ryan Lampers with uh, Hunt Harvest Health for for a couple days there, and we might kind of show him some ropes on filming. He's kind of going to get started filming his hunts. So should tell him to run away. <laughs> Save you well, money. <laughs> you know, I don't think he's, I don't think he's going for uh, the cinematic film style, more of just like a memory bank, you know, something, Got that, it. The kid, something that the kids can look back on. So yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's cool. But, yeah. Well, awesome, man. Well, uh, where can I listen to this, find out more about you? Uh, yeah, so I'm on uh, Instagram at uh, hard underscore working underscore hunter. Um, and then uh, YouTube channel, uh, hard working hunter. So those are the, the two biggest ones. And um, yeah, look forward. I got a, I still have my elk film from last year that I haven't put out. I'm still working on it. It's same, same kind of story trying to make a lot with a little don't have a lot. Right. of footage, So it's, it's taking a lot more editing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then definitely go check out my Wyoming film from this last year if you haven't already seen it because that one's pretty epic I'm really proud of that one uh just yeah that good. was the, that was the opposite I had so much film and yeah had to, had to break it down into you know you don't know what you want to get rid of yeah yeah it's tough yeah, yeah so. it's tough that's but, better that's a better problem to have though yeah yeah so, so yeah and then um yeah look 
look for me this winter um, when when I can release that full draw film tour, true conservation film. Uh, but I think that one's that one's gonna hit a lot of hearts. So that one's gonna be gonna be fun to release this winter. So sweet. Well, yeah. I look forward to see what you guys come up with. Um, yeah, man, that's all I got for you today. Um, yeah. I know you and I always keep in touch throughout the season going on. Yeah. Are you going to try to make it down to Arizona this year? or? Yeah, it's going to kind of depend on if I have to uh, hit all the shows. So, you know, because that is one problem with that. It's always during show season. So mm-hmm. um, maybe it, from the looks of it, if I can, it'll be the first week. So, so. yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely going to try. I know filming's got you busy through November, but there's a bunch of leftover rifle tags. And if you oh, want to, really? yeah, if you want to try to give a go at it, uh, I give you a couple of hunt numbers that are that I know the units real well. Um, and uh, you could come down for the rifle season for that week hunt. I think it's, I think it's mid November actually. Oh really? One, yeah, it's like. It's one week, and I gotta look. I don't. I don't ever hunt those November hunts anymore, um, just because I'm o- I'm always somewhere else chasing deer uh, in November. I'll be in South Dakota. Um, yeah, I'll send if you're if you're interested, I'll send it to you. Nice. So yeah, if you get it in like in the next day or two, you'll probably get a good chance of getting one of those tags. Oh shoot. So yeah. Cool. Good deal, man. Well, it's good to have you on. Um, yeah. Good to catch up. It's been a couple of weeks and months actually before since we talked. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, my so. plans, my plans changed since the last time we talked. I know you <laughs> and I was like, "Hey, I'm moving to Alaska." I'm like, "Oh yeah. shit, man." Yeah, it's all right. It's, Alaska's <laughs> still on the radar. It just got bumped back a while, so that's all right. Yeah, yeah. it happens. That's but gonna be a temporary except- thing anyway. I think you're just gonna go up there and kill yeah. all the things you can kill as a resident <laughs> yeah. and come back down. I know. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, it'll be like a two-year plan, maybe three. There you go. So, but oh, yeah, thanks awesome, for having man. me on. Absolutely. It's been fun, man. Thank you. Talk to you soon.